Ness is Sunshine here and today we are getting into an informational video. If you are not interested in taking makeup pictures, maybe this video isn't for you and that's totally fine. Let's get into the video. I take my pictures in my room. My husband's sitting right now where I normally sit. He's usually not here. I'm the one doing all the pictures and editing. <laughs> He's so offended. This is kind of my setup here. Usually take my pictures in front of the window. This is a newer ring light. I'll link it down below. So this is my camera. This is the Nikon D750. And I have this little mount here that helps it to attach to my ring light right here on this uh, shoe. This is the lens I use. Nikkor 50 millimeter 1.8 D. It's an old cheap lens. It works well for taking makeup pictures. It is a FX, meaning full frame camera. It gives better quality and higher resolution. Well, here we have the M for manual. I take my pictures in manual setting. This is also a Wi-Fi connection camera. And with the Wi-Fi, I connect it to a screen. I use the Nikon app because mine's a Nikon. I connect it through the Wi-Fi that's projecting from the camera. And then I click here, take photos. And then the camera opens and you can see there's my husband. So it's like a monitor. I use my iPhone because it's a lot smaller and easier. So you see my background is just my closet auto focuses and just click and then take the picture this is a really nice and convenient way to see my pictures and I found this out because of lipstick diaries on Instagram she was so helpful to message me so before I did this I had a clicker this is just from Amazon it's the basic thing and I would connect this to my camera and look at the mirror behind but now I don't need to do that I just use this so see how Dan <laughs> no, thank you you're posing perfectly so Daniel's sitting just directly, he's just sitting on the bed. This is basically what I do. Here I have a reflector. It helps an overall lighting to really lift the shadows from the face and give a youthful glow. I'll usually take my pictures around golden hour. The sun is so bright in this room and I get really good lighting. I'm very lucky to have my window facing west. So what I have here, this is just a diffuser. It acts as a soft box effect for the window. And that's what I use for my lighting. Remember on the top, we have the M. These settings are based off of Tamara Williams. Shutter speed at 160 or F at a very high aperture of 13. And I used to only take my makeup pictures, taking them at 1.8, which is a horrible idea because makeup, you want to show the detail. And then I started taking my pictures at 2.8. I started shooting at four, but ignoring the ISO this whole time. That has nothing to do with anything right now. When you up the aperture to 11 or 13, which is what I've been shooting on the last month and a half, which makes it quite dark. So unless you have really good lighting or you know how to use your manual settings well, like ISO, and the ISO, I have to bring for my particular lens and my lighting. I don't have a Hensel light like Tamara Williams, which is apparently a really fantastic light. So the ISO, I bring it up real high, either to a thousand or to 800. Not gonna be as grainy with a full frame camera when I go up that high. Now RAW is just instead of like a JPEG, a RAW image contains a lot more information. If you're taking pictures on a DSLR, I <laughs> recommend shooting in RAW and shooting in manual. If you don't know how to do this, there's so many helpful YouTube tutorials on how to shoot in manual, how to shoot in RAW. Frono's photos, Jared Pullen, I'll link everything below. So go ahead and just learn how to shoot in manual, learn how to shoot in RAW if you don't already. Editing the picture takes a long time. We do a lot of retouching on my skin. Some Sometimes I think I go overboard and I always am trying to learn. Here we have the raw image. You can see down there at the bottom the NEF, that means raw for Nikon, into this Lightroom app. I crop my picture first to four by five. That's the angle that I'm looking for or the crop I'm looking for. And then after I do that, I start my basic edits. This is very preferential. You can edit your picture how you want, but you can kind of just see this is what I end up with. I mess with all the different toggles. So you just do that how you prefer. This is an old picture. I want to see if it's similar. And I feel like it kind of is. I wish I made it warmer in Lightroom. But anyway, let's take it into Photoshop. I have a new layer here and I'm basically going to just name it blemishes. This is a common thing. And I'm taking the healing brush tool and I click option and the mouse to pick on a piece of skin nearby. And then I start using this brush tool all over. Oh, by the way, I also go up at the top. You see current and below. It's basically letting me take this layer and the background layer. So all I do is I just remove random things on my skin. Sometimes I remove moles or freckles like there. And I also remove hair and different things, flaws, imperfections, whatever you want to call it. I just keep going. And this day, that I have this makeup on. By the way, this isn't the same makeup I have on in the video. Removing like pimples and stuff, but this day I broke out from waxing my face. So I have a lot more pimples than I normally do. But this stuff right here, this is normal. These are like little tiny 
fine lines or wrinkles from smiling, laughing. I remove these little lines, the little pores, whatever you want to call them, and I just make it smooth. And then I just continue all over my face. I just go to town and remove all these sorts of things. Just using different parts of the skin and get rid of bumps. So I do remove a lot so that it looks more flawless. And then I keep going and going and and going along. So I go to my nose hairs because I don't like to wax them. I do trim them it's like too much. But um, yeah, I, I try to remove my nose hairs in Photoshop. Pores. I have a lot of pores on my nose and my forehead or yeah. Not my forehead, but yeah. That's it. That's the blemishes. Next layer, we're going to name it light. Make it a soft light layer. I'm going to add a guide. So I'm adding black and white layer and a curves layer. Curves layer, we're going to make it quite dark so we can see shadows better. And now what I'm going to do is take the curves in the black and white, drag them down into a folder. Call this folder guide. This is all very common stuff in retouching. Now I'm going to the brush tool, making it a normal brush tool. It should already be on normal, but if it isn't, opacity 100, the flow 1, 2, or 3 percent, and then make sure that we have the white for the color. But what I'm doing is because I've darkened the picture a lot, I can see the shadows a lot better. So I'm just lightening all the darkened parts. You can see before and after. See before, after. While I still have the guide on the black and white layer and the dark and curve layer, I can go ahead and use that healing tool and fix extra imperfections I see and then I can switch between the clone stamp tool and fix my lip a little bit here and there using a little bit of the airbrush technique as well now we're in a new part and then I'm going to merge those three new duplicates together into one and I'm going to name this blur and the reason why is because like in face seeing how people soften the face this is my version of it taking the eyedropper tool Picking a piece of skin color, take the, not the brush tool, but the mixer brush tool and I go to the top here. You can see the flow. Sometimes I like it to be more, sometimes I like it to be less. I have the little airbrush on and I go to town. Start to swirl around like in blending motions, kind of like blending eyeshadow, but we're blending skin. Move a lot in circular motions all throughout and soften up the face. Then I go to the next part and make a new layer from that same layer, dodge and burn. I head over to the left to the dodge and burn tool, take the burn tool. Exposure here is 11, I could do less or more and I just, burn where I need to darken the picture and then I take the dodge take the shadow tool and lighten up where I feel like I didn't lighten enough in the light layer back in the beginning and then I take the mid-tone part of the dodge and highlight the highlights then I create a new layer name it sharpen here I select sharpen and smart sharpen there's all kinds of options these are my options you can make it the same or different and then you can see here in the image previewing what the sharpening would be. You can make it way more sharp if you want to so it looks more like texture, more like skin. Or you can make it less sharp depending on if that's just too much for you and make it a bit less like to 195 and that's where I leave it. It's up to preference really. And then after it's sharp, I create a new layer. This whole time I've been doing an option and dragging the layer but so you can see you can duplicate the layer. And then I name this grain, the noise option, okay? So it's kind of where the sharpen option was but the noise option. And then this, you can preview it and see how much grain it's adding to the photo. I'm gonna use maybe seven something. And you can make it less, you can make it more. Again, this is up to preference. It creates a smoothness of texture throughout the whole face. Okay, and I take the burn tool to 3% and I go to my mole right there on my face and I just wanna darken it because in, in person, this mole is there, it's on my face. And sometimes I, I remove it, sometimes I keep it, sometimes I darken it, but here I wanted to darken it. So now that I have the grain layer, I'm going to make another light layer, and this is a light layer for the background, taking that dodge tool, the mid-tones, and taking from 4% down to like 3, and then making sure my brush is very smooth around the edges, feathery, and I really want to make the background like kind of brighten, so I just brighten up the background, so that it gives a cool light effect so you can see here it's nothing like you don't have to do this but this is what I'm doing sometimes I do this sometimes I don't sometimes it looks okay sometimes I think it, I shouldn't have touched it but that's another story now it's far by time to delete that guide we don't need it anymore and the additional basics this is something uh, I wish I would have done in Lightroom to make it look more like the previous photo this is something I do at the end of my photos to make sure it looks like the previous photo I posted here you can see 
the coloring, the contrast. I want to make sure it's similar so you can see there it is on. It's much more similar to the previous photo. And then let's just talk about what I did. I warmed up the picture with a photo filter. So this is what I have. I have it on 17. That's that. And then I take the vibrance and I bump up that vibrance because I felt like the picture looked quite dull. And then lastly, contrast. I added a lot more contrast here because I felt like it looked dull. I just wanted to make sure to add that contrast. And with all of those things, going back to the other photo, it all looks a lot more similar, cohesive, and that's what I'm going for. Um, again, these basic, additional basics I add at the end just to make sure that everything kind of goes together. Sometimes I don't do this and then I regret it after I've posted the picture. I'm like, oh, that picture doesn't go seamlessly with the other pictures. But that happens once in a while. Anyway, that's the picture. That's all of the different steps that I've been doing recently for editing. I might change it. Hopefully I'll continue to improve, learn how to do this better. But this is what I do for now. So this looks a lot better than it used to, but I still feel like it looks, I don't know. I think it looks a little fake. So I just want to continue to get better and make it look more realistic um so i'll just keep learning and i hope you'll learn too in the process and we'll learn together and keep practicing taking pictures keep getting better with our lighting keep getting better with our manual settings and keep getting better with our retouching so so if you enjoyed this video and do appreciate it please go ahead and like it subscribe to my channel and you probably already follow me on Instagram if you're going to watch the video because that's where the requests came from. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye now.